Yo. Huh. Aubrey Edwards, Tony Schiavone. We bout to party. We bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up. Hey everybody, it's AEW Unrestricted, official podcast of All Elite Wrestling. I am Aubrey Edwards, referee, and uh, do a bunch of other shit. And then we've got yeah, Alex here, you are. who guest co-host, <laughs> but he's absolutely been killing it. I've, I've, I'm so happy Alex has been able to help us out with the podcast. Well, Tony Schiavone's been an asshole slash really busy. Um, so thank you so much for always filling in, man. Oh, my pleasure. Always so much fun. And Aubrey, I'm so excited to be talking to our guest because I always re- refer to her uh, when I'm doing Spanish commentary as La Chica del 305. The yes. Girl from 305. It's yes. none other than Diamante in the Hola. House. You already know I appreciate the introduction, Alex. <laughs> Anytime. It's so great to finally connect with you. I'm so excited for everyone to hear your story. So excited for us to have this chat. So welcome to Unrestricted. Me too. I'm excited because I feel like I don't get to talk much. So I'm excited to talk and, you know, tell my story and to be on the podcast finally. Exactly. Like, I, as soon as, like, Stacey sent me the email invite for this, I'm like, how the hell have we not had Diamante on this yet? Like, <laughs> it's you know, so silly. Yeah, sometimes I feel like I just fly under the radar because I'm just, you know, so chill. <laughs> very chill, which you is very, very chill. appreciated on show day because it can be very chaotic and to have, like, a calm and like soothing presence in the locker room when everyone else is just like, oh, fuck this, fuck today. And you're just like, you know, it's it's crazy because on show days, like I I can always feel how tense it is and everybody's, you know, busy running around. And I like to refer to myself as an emotional support human. Yes. So I'm always like always mischievous, always trying to make somebody uh, laugh, like break the ice, you know, just so they can relax and just remember to enjoy the moment and, you know, not be so worried about it. Speaking of emotional support, human, um, one of my favorite things about Jacksonville was when you and Kiera would bring in Blaze, mm-hmm. uh, which I mean, we have to talk about because he's like the cutest dog. And now he's got a little brother. So and you <laughs> talk know, about honestly, how amazing your dogs are for a minute. Honestly, I don't like to toot my own horn, but I, I will talk about my dogs forever. And I believe they were the real MVP of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Oh, 100 um, percent. Yep. Literally, like they would play soccer with Penta and Angelico and just, you know, keep everybody's spirits lifted. And even, you know, John Moxley, I've never really seen him, you know, John Mox, Mox is Mox, right? Yeah. Crazy Mox. Um, I've never seen him crumble down to his knees and make these funny, like, I'm playing with the baby noises. <laughs> like, seeing him play with Blaze, I was like, okay. Like everybody loves dogs. Like that's it. Doesn't matter how hard you are, how soft you are. Like a dog is gonna just make you melt. I'm not a dog person, but I like your dogs. So that's that's a big testament to how amazing they are. A lot went into training them. Um, Blaze has amazing impulse control. Like I gotta I gotta post a video of uh, when I feed him. He's the best. Like he will not touch his food unless I say okay. Sometimes I make him wait wow. like thirty seconds, and he he'll just. Like, I'm not supposed to be touching my food here, right? She hasn't said go. He'll wait. Wow. He won't go until I tell him, go ahead. You, you can't go. even train me to do that. Like, <laughs> I mean, I I don't, yeah, I don't keep, I always like eat Kira's food. I'm like, oh, I have to make sure it's not poison so you can eat it now. Very kind. <laughs> You're of just you. caring. You're just caring. <laughs> All right. Well, wow. let's get into it. Um, yeah, you've you've had a number of bangers recently, like Willow Nightingale, Riho, multiple times. Uh, you've you've been taking that like main event spot on Dark, which has been awesome. And it's one of those like you've always been such a great wrestler. And I think just because you're so caring and supportive of everybody, like I, I think everyone appreciates when someone like that ends up getting that spotlight a little mm-hmm. bit. I remember yeah. recently, like when you had the the rematch with Riho, we were literally talking about it. Like, man, remember that match you had with Riho and how great it was? And, like the card came out. And we're like, yeah, let's fucking go. This is awesome. Dude. And honestly, I love working all the Joshis. Like Riho is no exception. I've had awesome matches with Rio Mizunami, with Sheeta. Um, I've tagged with Emmy a bunch of times and just... I, I really had, I feel like me and Riho had some pretty good chemistry, but like that's going back to, I feel like I have good chemistry with the Joshis anyways, because, you know, we just kick each other's asses and mm-hmm. um, 
I just love like how intricate their move set is and how well I play off of it. Just fun. And it's a good spot to be in to main event dark. Like somebody's got to do it. Why not me? There you go. And, and do you find that you have favorite styles that maybe are not similar to yours that you really mesh with or does not really matter for you given the fact that you're pretty much a, a veteran at this point and have faced all different styles? You know what? It doesn't really matter because I just love to kill it. I love uh, making people's moves look good. Uh, I just like having like these really good moments where you're like, oh, holy shit, that looked like pretty brutal. So I just that's what I like to do. I like to have a good time out there, I like to make sure my opponent is safe and their stuff looks good. And then, yeah, get my that's, shit in, too. That's the the mark of a veteran wrestler. Just making sure everybody looks good and everybody's safe. That's That's mm -hmm. the most you can ask for. I yeah. love it. Um, so you actually uh, originally came to us, I think, early 2020, um, before everything shut down, and you had a debut against Big Swole. Yes. And I remember this because I was like, oh, good, we got Diamante here. So she's going to fucking kill it, and then we got to sign her because she's amazing. Uh, <laughs> and I think you and Swole had worked together before on the indies, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. So so what was that really like, match like with you? Um, well, she is a really good friend of mine, and I believe that she personally requested this match. I, I believe they were going to have her work maybe like a, somebody maybe a little less well-known or like somebody a little more random. Maybe like and a local she, or something. Yeah, and then she went to Kenny Omega. She was like, if we're going to Miami, there's one person I need to wrestle, <laughs> and that's Diamante. And he said, okay, well, that sounds great. And literally... Uh, if I can, like, wrestling from, like, in your hometown, like, at the UM Arena, at the Wasco Center, like, I have been there for concerts. The first, uh, my first ever concert was Evanescence, and I saw them uh. there. Huge, huge fan. Uh, and I saw them there, and just wrestling there was uh, iconic because, you know, the Miami Hurricanes play there, big fan of them. And uh, we were the first match on the show. So, and I had an entrance, and I was just, like, Oh, it was just, it was so overwhelming for me, but in a good way. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this is all happening. Um, and we killed it, man. We had a banger. Um, it was really good match. And you were probably my favorite part of the match because there's certain moments we're rocking and rolling. The crowd is just coming up and you're like, you guys are doing fucking great. Keep going. <laughs> like your, your encouragement literally it gives like a second wind and like it's it's just it's so important and i really appreciate you i'm pretty sure you get this all the time Thanks. i don't know what you do but i'm i'm putting you over right now you're the Thanks. best part of the match those little checks in the mail those little <laughs> <laughs> encouragements are the best from you i always just feel like wrestlers kind of like get caught in the moment where they're focused on like what sure. they're doing making sure they're selling what's the next move where do i need to sell to and you kind of like just forget that you're in front of all these people that are loving you. So oh, no, no. I try to just remind you that it's like, hey, uh, everyone's loving this. You're doing great. It's yeah. awesome. Like, I just try to be like supportive mom in the middle of the match, I guess. I don't know. For sure. No, it's it's much needed. Like you said, we're just tunnel vision and we're trying to remember our job and the cameras and do our thing. And it's it's a nice refresher and a reminder. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, let's talk about something that's kind of complete opposite of that match that you just mentioned that the crowd was going nuts let's talk about a match that had absolutely no crowd <laughs> oh, no yeah. fans just which was your dynamite <laughs> debut against evil east so tell us what that was like debuting on dynamite with no fans against evil east wow um it was it, it you know it was crazy but um so girls do customs all the time, right? And mm -hmm. custom matches are, you know, uh, if you're paying for the match, you can write out a script and that's usually shot in front of no people. So I guess I was mm -hmm. kind of used to it. But when it's for TV, it's like, okay, this is not just a custom match. It's not relaxed. It's not laid back. And me and Evie actually beat the shit out of each other. Like I was, mm -hmm. she was, she was just whacking me and chopping me, hit me. And I was like, give me more. Is that all you got? It was mm -hmm. it was intense. Um and I I snuck out with the victory in that match, so it was pretty good. But yeah, really intense, really hard hitting. 
And Ivelisse is somebody that I respect deeply. Uh, she's also a veteran in this game. Um, yeah, and I kicked her ass and I came out with a W. It was hard hitting. And uh, I can't say that we had, you know, the energy from the crowd. <laughs> so it was kind of like, you know what? I'm going to have to dig deep in myself. And, you know, because when we get the crowd, it's, you know, it's easier to feed off. We just feed off of their energy. I so. feel like everyone kind of fed off of the Austin Guns energy. And uh, that only goes so far. <laughs> he was Austin Gunn was definitely the unsung hero of the pandemic era. I don't know how he did it every night. He just gave us everything, all his energy. I'm like, man, he's ringside and he's giving us all this. Like, I can I can appreciate that. And then and again, the same, same at 9 p.m., same, same at 2 a.m. Like he, he never had an off switch. There was no down. There was no down. It was always just a constant high. Right. And I'm just like, is he just going to crash and like die once we're done? <laughs> like, how, <laughs> how is this going to happen? He never did. Oh, my he God. Wonderful. Um, so it's, it's funny that you had your dynamite debut of, against Eva Lee's because then you guys went on to win the women's tag team tournament uh, as partners. So how, how did you go from enemies on dynamite to partners in this awesome tournament? You know what? I feel like it was kind of like a street thing. Like, if we're going to, like, you have to, like, earn respect. You know mm. what I'm saying? You kind of yep. have to, like, put the other person through the ringer and see what they're made of. Um, and I believe that Evie, I'm sure she thought she would be the victor in that match. And it, I, you know, like I said, I beat her. And I'm sure she didn't expect it. So I'm sure I earned her respect. But not only there, you know what I'm saying? But, like, yeah, I earned her respect. And I guess she felt like I was good enough to tag with her to try and win some tag team gold and you know we actually did that we were the first ever uh tournament champions for aw i remember yeah, that final too because i think it was you uh versus brandy and bunny yes and and like everyone at that point was just like oh my god like this is everything about that like it was just structured so well it was awesome like everyone who was teaming together it was just like these are good matches these are great mixes of people mm -hmm. it was just so incredibly awesome and i was so proud of you to see you win this thing because it's just like I, as i said before you want to see good people who are putting in the work get sure. the recognition they deserve so super awesome we're having an awesome awesome conversation with diamante here on aew unrestricted more coming up unrestricted. Hey, it's Alex and Aubrey back at Unrestricted with La Chica del 305, Diamante in the house. And Diamante, we were just talking about before the break about how you're one half of the uh, women's tag team tournament winner, winners, if you will. Uh, but I want to talk about something that was, I'd say, almost equally as exciting because you had the chance to take on Jade Cargill on yes. Rampage Grand Slam in Arthur yes. Ashe Stadium. And not only that, but you had Trina by your side. Tell us about that moment. Oh, talk about legendary Miami born people, man. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm a legend in my city because, you know, I got the entrance <laughs> with Trina. Yep. Who is, she's just the go of Miami. Like, you can't mention Miami without mentioning Trina or Trick Daddy, Pitbull. Um, and uh, it was just iconic. And honestly, it was in front of, how many thousands of fans was it? Like 20,000? 22,107, I believe. Yeah, something like that. It was wild. It, it was wild. The match, it wasn't the longest match, but I will say that I stood in the ring and I looked up and I just took the moment in because I was probably, not probably, that was most definitely the biggest crowd I had ever been in front of. Like, most definitely. And it's iconic Arthur Ashe, like... And it's somebody like Jade Cargill, who's literally been unstoppable. Um, I thought I had a good chance, but she she just shut me down. She was too powerful. But but that's not to say that I haven't been watching her tapes and strategizing. Mm. All right. So all right. So the you know, match could be coming. I let oh. it. I let it slide the first time. I made a bunch of oh. mistakes that I shouldn't have. You know, I'm a vet in this business. But let round two come around. Oh. And I'm telling you, I'm not even like, I'm telling you, it's going to be different. The I outcome will be different. 
if you don't believe it, no one will. So I appreciate That's it. That's right. No, I'm telling you right now, I'll kick her ass. <laughs> All right. Let's I do it. it. And and what? you got to get some revenge from Trina after what she did to you. You know what? I feel Young like shit. Trina, I, you know what? I feel like Trina was showing me tough love. I felt like she was <laughs> right. slightly embarrassed. You know, I didn't really represent the city well. So it was kind of like, mm. it was kind of like, oh, you're not going to represent the city? Well, I'm cool with Jade anyway. So let me go hang on her side. You know, I want to be a part of the winner's circle. And I get it. I get it. I'm not even mad. All I right. mean, I want to be a part of the winner's person. circle too. You know, I get it. I feel it's, like it's, in the inevitable rematch, like Jade with Trina in her corner and then you with Cardi B. Because, no doubt. <laughs> Yo, Cardi B is a wrestling that. fan. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. Like, none of us knew. And then all of a sudden, she's, like, retweeting this thing. And it's like, oh, my God, Cardi's watching the show. This is great. <laughs> yeah, we were. She retweeted the the tweet with me and Trina. I'm like, oh, that's totally me on a tweet that Cardi B posted. And then we were on right. the shade room. All kinds of, like, celebrities were posting us. It was great. Oh, my God. So absolutely amazing. Uh, So this is something I didn't actually know, despite, like, going through the entire pandemic with you guys, that Casey Navarro is your brother? Yes. What? What? When I heard this, when we were prepping for the show, my mind was literally blown. I was like, what? No, I almost text you. I'm like, (laughs) is this? I had no idea. Yeah, that's my little brother. Um, He just, he didn't want it out there because he's like look um i don't really want to be in your shadow um you know we can start telling people we we can start telling people once i get like bigger and you know so i'm not riding your coattails kids a workhorse he he inspires me his passion for this business the kid doesn't stop he's talking to his phone all day he's talking to a mirror all day he's cutting promos on instagram live he's talking to his fans he doesn't stop he eats, lives, and breathes professional wrestling. Damn. And 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 having him around, like we we talk every day. We FaceTime every day. He makes sure that I'm in the gym. I make sure he's not skipping leg day and he's eating like, you know. <laughs> Cause you know, you know, guys like to work right out there. the upper body, but they forget about the foundation. <laughs> oh, I make sure ahead. he's not skipping leg day. I make sure he's eating his meals and not just chicken nuggets. Uh, you know, so he gets big, but yeah, he's um, he's the best little brother that I could have ever asked for. He's uh, he's amazing, horse, and he loves his so, business. So, did you guys like grow up, uh, like both loving wrestling? Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's a a big John Cena, Zack Ryder, Roman Reigns guy. Like, oh my god, huge. Mm. Like he dresses up like <laughs> he dressed up like them all the time, and he's just he. Those are his heroes. And um, he's actually getting to wrestle Matt Cardona, a.k.a. Oh. Zach Ryan, soon uh, for, I think, a promotion in, I can't remember which promotion it was, somewhere in his area, like New Jersey, PA. Um, but yeah, he gets to wrestle Matt Cardona in a couple weeks, and he wow. sent me he sent me the picture of him doing a meet and greet with Matt Cardona, and he had to be, like, 11 years old. And he's 23 now, like fast forward a decade and he's going to get to main event with one of his idols. That's awesome. It's very Very, cool. Very proud of him. Very proud of him. That's incredible. The things you learn wrestling, such a small world. This is this is so cool. Uh, Speaking of wrestling, let's back up a little bit. How did you get into this crazy world of professional wrestling? Uh, Tell us about that. Were you always a big wrestling fan growing up? Like we all are, right? Always mm-hmm. a huge fan. Um, so I lived with my grand. So my mom and my dad got divorced. Sad story. Um, and then I went to go live with my grandmother for like two or three years. And my grandmother at the time was raising my uh cousin, um, who was going through a uh, long story. Like, uh, he had a uh, bone marrow cancer. In his oh wow! Leg. So one of his legs got amputated. Um, he was in and out of the hospital. Yeah, like she cared for him a lot. So he was like my hero growing up because I was like, man, he oh, was yeah. he was like almost like he had like a thirty percent chance of living. Um, oh, wow. and he made it through. He beat chemo. He beat cancer and um, made a full recovery. And literally, he had one leg, but uh. 
he was the fastest kid that I know. Like he didn't let anything slow him down. He kicked ass and, you know, uh, he kind of always had his way. And we were, it was me, my sister, my cousin, and my mom in a one, in a, in a one bedroom on mm-hmm. bunk beds. So, uh, yeah, we were, we were crammed in there and he had his, it was just one TV. So he decided what was on the TV and he would always put wrestling on. And one day I was just like, uh, I can't, I can't even remember what I saw, but I just remember being captivated and being so angry at the heels, at the bad guys mm. in wrestling. I'm like, oh, they're so evil. I want them to get their ass kicked. And, uh, I was just captivated by the sport and the drama and the storylines. And, um, fast forward a couple of years, I was still watching wrestling in high school. And I was like, man, I gotta be the only one who still watches wrestling. Like, who else watches <laughs> wrestling still, right? One day I'm in high school. Shout out Miami High, home of the Stingrees, um, oh. class of 09. <laughs> uh, I was in high school one day having lunch, just in the courtyard, and I remember hearing a group of people talking about like the Monday Night Raw that just happened, and I, my ears. <laughs> yep. I was like, oh, Your spidey I kinda, senses were tingling. I yeah. kind of just invited myself in the conversation and those close group of people became my friends. And it turns out that they had this own their own little backyard fed called ETW Extreme Teen Wrestling. <laughs> and I was like, you guys have what? They're like, yeah, we have our own little backyard <laughs> fed. And I'm like, mind you, I had no idea what the concept of their backyard fed was so i was like i gotta check this out my mom was pretty strict about making sure after school every day i went home on the bus i can't miss the bus because she paid for the bus right Mm -hmm. so i can't miss it because i'm gonna have to probably walk home right uh so my friends were inviting me for weeks and for months and i'm like yeah yeah i'll go one day i'll go one day one day after school uh, one of my best guy friends is standing there and he's like, you've been telling me for weeks. You still haven't come. And I go, you know what? I'll go today. Pick up the phone and call my mom. Say, hey, mom, uh, I'm not going to get on the bus today, but I'm just letting you know, okay, I'm going to go to my friend's house because they have a backyard wrestling thing. It's totally fine. It's totally <laughs> No fine. worries. No worries. I'll be home later. All I can hear is, you better get on the bus. All right, bye, mom. Love you. Oh, I love it. Okay. And I got to my friend's house and some of them were a part of the, uh, what is that class called? Like production class where you like Mm -hmm. film like the morning news and stuff like that. So they had camera equipment. Yeah. So they borrowed the camera equipment from school and they were cutting promos and, and I know, right? Like there was production production backyard fed. (laughs) There was production at this backyard show. Okay. (laughs) They were cutting promos and putting it together. And they literally taped their stuff on VHSs to have like a whole show. And I was just blown away by the effort put in. I was like, whoa, like they're, they're serious about this. Like this is a real thing. And I just joined them. I think I ran at somebody, gave them a cross body. And I was like, wow, this is uh like something tingled inside of me. I was like, oh man, this is definitely what I got to do. Like, I know what I want now in life. <laughs> Damn. And um, I hung out with them and did their little backyard thing. And then um, we got transferred to someone who was training professionally. And that was uh, my trainer. Uh, his name is Rusty Brooks. God rest his soul. He passed during mm-hmm. the pandemic. Um, and, uh, yeah, he trained a bunch of backyarders and made us pros and yeah, here I am fast forward 12 years later. Wow. That's, yeah. that's wild. It's always, always funny hearing people who are like, oh yeah, I just wrestled around the backyard and then got trained and now I'm on TV. Like <laughs> it's literally one of those like dreams come true type things, right? Like super. Yeah. Dope. Yeah, sometimes I like I, I get to work or I get to AW and I'm I'm there backstage at production and I and I look out at the empty arena and I'm like, man, like I'm just amazed to be where I am sometimes, like and, and grateful always. And I always like, Dope. you know, it's always the little things. I always take in the moment. Even if I'm not on the show, I just look around and I'm like, wow, 
I'll be wrestling here later, you know? It's nice. Yeah. It's real cool. That's super cool. Uh, so before you were Diamante, you were Angel Rose. Uh, <laughs> so uh, share, share the name behind that, like, name and gimmick and kind of, like, where did the transition happen? Man, like I said, I was... Uh, I was in high school and I was obsessed with wrestling and I couldn't, I was in class, like writing spots down, like mm-hmm. kind of like a <laughs> sky blue reminds me a lot of my younger self. Cause she comes to AW. She's just got notebooks and pages of ideas. And I'm like, like she warms my heart because I'm like, man, I was like that once upon a time. Just she's, not, she's stopping. like everybody's little sister. Yeah, like just nonstop thinking about wrestling and just writing it down like in your class, like in your notebook and stuff. And I'm like, I got to have a cool name, right? Because you can't be a wrestler with like a whatever name. So I'm like, what can I throw together? And I was like, um, I- I'm sometimes I'm like really, really deep in thought. And I-, I like things to have significant meaning that mean a lot to me. Um, So Angel, uh. I have angel wings tattooed on my back and I feel like I've always uh, like my father passed away like three days before my 10th birthday. So I feel like it's actually his birthday today. Oh, wow. Yeah. But uh, I named myself angel because I always feel like there was an angel watching over me and guiding me. And I always like, like, he's got to be it. So, um, yeah one second <clears throat> so yeah i always felt like i just needed like you know like a like a higher power like a higher energy source right. so i'm like angel connection okay my dad that's a way to put my dad in it he's my angel that's gonna be my first name and then i just like roses i have a rose tattoo on my arm as well Cause it's uh you know roses signify love and I have a lot of love I have a big heart I have a lot of passion so and that's who Angel Rose was she was a fearless crazy little bastard <laughs> who wasn't scared to throw her body around and and she didn't uh second guess anything very fearless so yeah I always uh brought my dad's energy to the ring and stuff I always had that in my back pocket that like he's watching me and he's guiding me in every match that I have. That's awesome. Oh, that's a great story. So w- where did you uh, transition into Diamante? How did that come to be? That was in 2017 when I got signed to Impact Wrestling. Mm-hmm. And I got linked up with Conan and somebody you may know as Santana and Ortiz. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just, you know, we formed, we formed this pretty <laughs> uh, iconic reversion sure. of LAX, um, the Latin American Exchange. And... We, I was there with Conan backstage and he's like, oh, we need a name for you. And I'm trying to think of something. And I'm like, man, I want to think of something that sounds cool. That's not like just generic or like corny. And literally, I'm standing in front of Conan and he's he's got this magic about him when he before he cuts a promo, before he does a segment, he kind of paces back and forth and he's like talking to himself. He looks like he's rapping. Right. Oh, yeah. And he's just <laughs> like, he points at me and he's like, literally like this. He goes, I got it. He goes, how do you like Diamante? And I go, oh, nice. Like, oh, my God. That's that's perfect because it's not just regular. And, in, you know, in English, it means yeah. diamond. Mm-hmm. Like some of the, the hardest, toughest stuff you can think of. And I'm like, fuck, yeah. Like, let's do it. That sounds perfect. And so, yeah, Conan blessed me with that name. That's awesome. I had no idea. I, I love Conan. Every time I get a chance to see him, I'm like, man, this guy's freaking great. He's so awesome. He, he is a character. And to work with him, it's like witnessing magic. Like it's it's pretty it's pretty phenomenal. He's he's a awesome. great he's he's got a mind for this business like no other. He's amazing. He's amazing and he's done amazing things for people. And I'm so I'm, many people. So many people. So many people. And this is this is AEW Unrestricted coming up. We got more conversation with Diamante, including fan questions. Unrestricted. AEW Unrestricted, Aubrey, Alex, Diamante. We're having an awesome conversation. And just before we get to fan questions, I want to touch on this a little bit. Um, so you and Kiera are together. 
And one of the things I love about you guys is how open you are with your relationship and like just getting it out there in the public and being such huge advocates for the LGBTQ community and representation in general. And I know that's as someone who's also in that a part of that community, like I really appreciate that. And it's awesome seeing the both of you both thrive, but also being supportive of each other. Um, can you talk a little bit about when you and Kira decided to go public with all that? For sure. I'm I'm not going to lie. It, it was all very new for me because I'm used to I'm used to keeping everything on the inside. Like, I don't really like let my personal life out there or put it out there. I'm not like over the top with them. Very private, reserved. Um, and I was I was never honestly before care. I was never comfortable with my sexuality because I'm like, ah, uh, you know, it's wrestling. I don't want to like weird people out. I don't know how everybody's going to feel. But that's just me living in my own head. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to living freely for myself. Um, Kiera actually gave me a lot of that confidence. Like, I think we gave each other the confidence we didn't have um, to be out and like just ourselves with our relationship. Um, it was, yeah, like very, very different for me. Cause like I said, I was used to being just to myself and then just getting with her and, and seeing how happy I was. I was like, this, this doesn't deserve to be hidden or, or, kept behind closed doors like this deserves to just for people to see it and maybe to be inspired uh by 100 percent. it was uh it was crazy because she uh announced it online and it kind of broke the internet there was like dirt sheets or like news articles about it and i was like whoa okay this is like impactful like like this is probably gonna make like a change like negative or positive it's gonna make a change and it's just cool to um be that not like the like the forefront it's just cool to be like hey look i'm, I'm you are I'm, the change i right right because i talk about it so much i'm like oh, i wish somebody would do it and it's like okay well i guess i should step up and and do it so it's really 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 cool and uh it's a relief to be honest with you it's nice to just feel supported and to be myself and ourselves around our friends and coworkers and have like, like I said, undying support because everybody loves us and supports us. So it's, it's uh it was life changing for sure. That's really cool. And you, it, what's also neat about it is the fact that you also get to work together, uh, yes. whether obviously now in AEW, but in the past, you've also had an opportunity to uh, tag up and win gold. So you were the, uh, uh, the wild tag team champs. For a while, is that yes. correct? Yes, yes. Me and Kiera did win gold at Women of Wrestling. Um, we won this tournament to become the the new uh, tag team champions. Uh, they haven't had they hadn't had tag team champions in years, and uh, yeah, we we won those inaugural tag belts, and it was just it was really cool because um, we are both like units by ourselves, but together we're like a force. Mm -hmm. And it was just very, very, um, it's just iconic to like win gold with your significant other. Like it's, it's kind of hard when you're in like a, I guess a heterosexual relationship. You can't just win tag team belts with your significant other, but you know, we, we get to do that. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of dope. Cool. I didn't really think about that. That, that makes a lot of sense. It's like, this isn't an opportunity that a lot of people get to experience. Right. Like we wear each other's clothes. We get to fit each other's clothes. It's great. A lot of people don't, <laughs> don't have that luxury. Like I, she That's fits true. my shoes. It's it's great. Oh, man. That totally opens up your shoe game, too. If you can uh, oh, wear sure. someone else's. Oh, but, that's I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah. Winning, just winning the winning the tag gold that like it just I, I just love that our chemistry like in the ring, like was showcased and like we have chemistry in the ring outside of the ring, like. We're just we're really close. We're like best friends. So it's nice to have footage of that and to see how we look on camera. So it's cool. It's I great. Think. And yeah. And, and for people that don't know you guys, like you guys are just perfect together. It's just so absolutely wonderful. It's it's one thing to see both of you thrive, but to see both of you thrive together at the workplace is just like, oh, it's so, I'm so proud of you. This is for wonderful. sure. If she has a match, I'm there supporting her and telling, mm -hmm. telling her, you know, she's got it and reminding her she's a superstar. And if I have a yeah. match, she's 
supporting me, number one. So, so yeah. great. This is a nice segue into our fan questions. Uh, so Ryan Slee asks, if AEW did a mixed tag tournament, uh, who would you want to tag with? Ooh, a mixed tag tournament. You know what? I'm going to have to look at Alex and say, I'm going to have to steal one of your guys and probably oh. take Ray Phoenix. All right. That's a good I choice. I want to see that. I think me and Phoenix would kill it and we would be a dope ass team for sure. Yeah. That's a really great answer. What a combination for oh, sure. Dude. My mind is blowing up thinking about it right now. Like, <laughs> I think there could be a lot of good stuff coming out of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, see uh, this is a really kind of topical uh, question that Exile to Halifax wants to know. With all this hype coming up about Wembley Stadium this year, if you could perform at any venue in the world, regardless of size or event, which would it be? Any venue in the world? Any. World's your oyster. Oh, man. Talk about no pressure, huh? I mean, I don't I don't want to like have like a small answer and say. What is the, the arena called now? Because, you know, they went through different owners, the Kaseya Center in Miami. You know, Was like it the American that's, Airlines. Yeah, the AAA. Yeah. I'm, I'm always going to refer to it as the AAA. Of course. But, yeah. Uh, that that would be it. But I'm trying to think like. Maybe like a Coliseum in Rome. I don't know. Something oh. like that. Yeah. Okay, that's that's what I want now. Like, <laughs> you know, something like just completely out of the box. But Wembley's oh, up there, know. but like something like the Coliseum would be sick. That's wow, dope. that would be cool. I don't think they've had many wrestling Very matches cool. there. That's what I, uh, yeah, but you know, why not? Maybe back in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, back in the day. They were different back kinds. Back in the day. <laughs> different kind of wrestling. Um, really glad someone's asking this question because I want to talk about this and uh, highlight all of your work in this. Uh, Deadite Phil asks, so you've been working on a new training program focused on fitness. Uh, you have in incredible conditioning and just like the progress that you have displayed in the last few months. Yeah, I mean, like, look at it. Put those guns away. Like, you're going to need a license, ma'am. Easy. Um, <laughs> so so what, what has that been like? Like, what was the impetus for that? And, you know, what is your training program right now? And I will copious, copiously take notes. <laughs> it, it, it is a, a lot of cardio and carb cycling. So yes. I, I got the knowledge. Um, I actually have another brother, an older brother. His name is Ricky Martinez. He's actually a wrestler as well. He competed in his first bodybuilding competition back in uh, the, the, the December here in Tampa. And... I was blown away and inspired by what he was able to achieve in his physique. He won first in his class. He didn't Whoa. win the overall competition, but he won first in his class and size. And um, he gave me a diet. And I was like, I want your diet. And it was a lot of egg whites, a lot of uh, cream of rice. I have mm -hmm. a bomb ass cream of rice recipe. It involves blueberries, cool. bananas, cinnamon, sugar-free syrup. You'll thank me later. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah, um, we'll be getting that on Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Sure. But yeah, it, it was it's intense because I went from eating maybe two to three times a day to five meals a day. Mm. With a it's just constant. That, yes. All day, every three hours eating food. So I would wake up in the morning and do 30 minutes fasted cardio. So cardio, no food in your belly, just maybe some water, maybe some mm -hmm. black coffee to not break the fast. Um, cardio 30 minutes every morning, get a meal in, get another meal in, hit the gym for about an hour and a half, two hours. And then, um, cardio after the gym session, wow. 20 minutes. And yeah, it's, I was doing that every single day for four months. And these are the yeah. results, baby. Paid off. The there results. you go. Yeah, I off. Pays off. cardio carb cycling. And I actually have a food scale that I that doesn't leave my counter. I had to weigh all my oh, food. Oh, same. Same. Oh, it's just like, one of those, like, you got to make sure your macros are legit. And I don't think people who, like, people outside of, like, uh, athletics, I think, don't truly realize. It's not just bodybuilders who are eating constantly. It's like, you have to eat constantly. I to mean, the if point you're... that, like, 
oh, it's it's annoying. Like I loved food. And now that I've started like really focusing on nutrition, I'm like, man, I really don't want to eat right now. But it's like it's been three hours. I have to. Uh, and it's like it's just annoying how much you have to eat. It is. And it, it definitely takes some getting used to. I'm not going to lie. The first two weeks I was in a frenzy. Like I was I was like second guessing myself. I'm like, oh, my God, am I going to be able to do this? But you have to remember in the process to trust it and to be kind to yourself. Like if you have a bad day, it's okay. That's why we love tomorrow, right? It's always tomorrow. Just be kind to yourself. And you know, tomorrow's going to be a new day. But yeah, That's like awesome diet, advice. Yeah. The diet is intense. Um, the carb cycling is intense. Uh, I would go to my mom's house, you know, Spanish parents oh. love to feed you. You mm -hmm. cannot, you cannot not eat at a Spanish person's house. That's like, right. It's the rules. So I'm at my mom's house and she's serving me. And I'm like, mom, like you got to take half this rice back. She's like, what mm -hmm. do you mean? This is what I serve your niece and nephew who's like six years old. And I'm like, it's fine. It's going to be fine. I'm on a low carb week, mom. You got to you got to work with me here. So. Yeah, That's it's fantastic. definitely one of those like embarrassing things where you go to a restaurant and you're like, if I could just have water and you're like that person because it's like off your diet. And, mm -hmm. Man, I had to do that this weekend where I'm like, can I just get a cup of coffee? Is like people are ordering chicken fried steak and freaking JoJo's. And I'm just like, oh, my God, like I want to eat all of this, but I can't. It's a low carb day. <laughs> yeah, it gets tough. It gets tough. So let's uh, let's move on to this question here, which I find pretty fascinating. So death, 42 chasm. I loved you in Pact of Vengeance. Yes! How much fun was it filming? And do you have any more movies lined up that you're going to act in? So Pact of Vengeance. Wow. What an experience uh, that uh, I actually got reached out to. I first, you know, sometimes as wrestlers, we get emails that like you don't know if they're like legit yep. or not. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's fans trying to fantasize book you for something. Yeah. I remember getting an email from this guy, but he sent me his like resume and the work that he's done. He sent me links. His name was Lynn Leonard, Len Kabasinski. And, uh, yeah, he's a director for indie films and he sent me a link to a bunch of his stuff. And I was like, okay, this guy seems legit. He sent me a contract over about the movie and I was just happy that um he wanted to cast me for the role of Ava Hernandez which is this badass like pretty much like a uh what was she like not a bounty hunter but just she's in this group of like mercenaries who like take out the bad guys so she's this like badass like you know girl with the gun <laughs> So uh, not not too far off from my character in wrestling and um I just thought it was really really cool to be a part of that movie and to, you know, shoot prop guns. And uh, it was just really, really fun experience. Len, uh, uh, Peter Avalon was a co-star of mine in the movie. Yes. And Peter's phenomenal. I loved working with him because uh, he has a lot of acting and movie experience. But uh, it was cool. It was my first movie. And I learned a lot about how movies work. Um, Len, also the director, he's amazing. I don't know if you guys have seen the movie, but he choreographed a lot of the fight scenes. Whoa. And he uh, he's a fan of wrestling, like I said, and he's a fan of my work. So he choreographed uh, the fight scene where I had like my wrestling moves uh, wow. in there in the movie. So it was really cool to get to do like a signature wrestling move of mine in a movie. It was awesome. That's dope. That's really that awesome. Is. It's like part of yourself becoming your character. Yeah, yeah, it was really, really cool. Like it's, you know, legend, legendary status. I stuff. like it. Uh, we already talked about your pups a little bit, but I got to ask this question. LKW Artworks ask, where did your love of corgis start? My love of corgis started uh, in my previous relationship. My, uh, my, uh, ex-girlfriend her favorite dog was a corgi and I, li I like that they're both hanging out in the frame right now too both, <laughs> they, they knew we were talking on about command them. yeah right? very yes. well they know their spots uh -huh. they're much better they're much better we made our cameo route <laughs> oh yep that's all you it's get they up. don't work they don't get paid by the hour right <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, that was uh, her favorite dog. And one day I was like, I'm going to be cute and see if I find one. Um, and then I, I found one. I found a breeder. I got in contact with a breeder. And um, from the minute I got that corgi, I was like, oh, my God, this is like the best breed ever. And I spent a lot of time with uh, corgis, like training them. I've become a little bit of a dog whisperer, if I do say so myself. Wow. Uh Specifically a corgi whisperer, I would say. <laughs> but I got really, I just fell in love with the breed because of their personality. They're, they're stubborn. They're hilarious. They do funny stuff like sploot. Like I have this coffee mug. I'm obsessed now. But you see, there's a little sploot where their feet corgi stick butt. out. And um, yeah, I'm I just going to ask what a sploot was. <laughs> I was like, uh. <laughs> you know, they lay out, they lay out and then their back legs are just split it out yeah like like that like that look we already got a demonstration boom well trained on command (laughs) that's fantastic i just yeah i fall in love with the breed because they're the best uh queen elizabeth had like 20 something of them and i can't blame her i i want to be the new queen elizabeth with 20 20 something yeah why not they're the best look why not i even have a corgi like like mood thing Oh, oh my God! It changes. That's awesome. Like he's not in a good mood, and then boom, <laughs> I'm having fantastic. a good day. Today's a good day, and uh, not such a good day. Not this so much. You know. <laughs> oh my that God! Awesome. Like th- this, this is awesome. This, this whole conversation's been awesome. I love that we got to touch on so many things, from being an advocate to awesome dogs to being in movies and workout regimens. Like this was just a all over conversation, but so absolutely fantastic, just like yourself. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, and it was a little all over the place, too, kind of like myself. Whatever. Whatever. I think good. it's a good representation of you. Like, this, sure this was. was an absolutely awesome podcast. Thank you so much for being here today. And uh, I, I love you so much. <laughs> love you more. Oh, you can follow Diamante Instagram and Twitter on Diamante LAX. And, of course, you can listen to this podcast, new episodes every Thursday, all your favorite podcast platforms, videos on Mondays on YouTube. Just search AEW Unrestricted. You can watch all of AEW almost every day of the week. Dynamite on Wednesday, Rampage Friday, Dark Elevation, and Dark on Monday and Tuesday, respectively, where you can see this girl main eventing. You know, no big deal. Just, you know, all the time, whatever. And see over here, all good. Yeah, no big deal. Just like rocking her guns without a license and just coming in main event and shit. Like, no big deal. I am Aubrey Edwards here with Alex Eberhentes. Thank you so much for listening to AEW Unrestricted. <laughs>